and uh, uh, Luisa uh, Masha. Uh, representing the Circular Biobase Europe uh, Joint Undertaking, uh, in short, uh, CBEJU. Uh, and uh, uh, as uh, just said, I'm the PO of, uh, of Plenitude, and I'm very happy about it. As uh, I've just said to the uh, project partners, it's a topic um, in which I'm interested professionally and also uh, personally. So really glad to be here and really happy to be able to share with you today a few words on uh, who we are. Uh, what we do, and in particular, uh, how we are contributed to a greener and more sustainable future, hopefully. So, uh, CBJU, for those who have not heard about it before, it's a public-private partnership between the European Commission and the Biobase Industry Consortium, also called BIC, uh, both re uh, respectively representing the public and the private uh, partner is a uh, uh, seven years and two billion euros uh, initiative which operates under Horizon Europe, which you probably know is the new uh, EU framework uh, for research uh, and innovation. CBJU entered into force recently, uh, three months ago, uh, but we are not new because we are building on the successes of our predecessor, which was called Biobased Europe, uh, Biobased Industry Joint Undertaking, and which was part of uh, Horizon 2020. And in fact, in my presentation, at some point, I will be switching to BBIJU uh, because we just ended the uh, program uh, just at the end of 2021. So most of the impacts and the numbers are related still to BBIJU, while CBJU has not yet launched uh, its first programming and its first uh, uh, course. So in terms of uh, organizational structure, we have a governing board where both parties uh, are represented equally, an executive director and a program office where I, um, of which I'm also part. And we also have two advisory body, one composed of member states uh, and associated country representatives, and the other one is a scientific committee with uh, 15 uh, scientific independent uh, experts. Our objectives are threefold. First and foremost, uh, accelerate the uh, development of biobased innovative solutions. And once the solutions are mature enough, speed up their market deployment. And all of this while uh, ensuring a high level of environmental performance of the system and of the uh, sectors. But um, just want to make a, a step backwards of why, in the first place, uh, this kind of partnership was needed for the biobased industry sector. And uh, here's the concept. So there's a, a biomass out there, which is attractive and convenient feedstock, and we should be transformed and processed in uh, biorefineries, in flagship biorefineries, and transform ultimately in biobased product products. So you see the challenge we had a decade ago, uh, the, the bridging the innovation, to the innovation gap and the deployment gap, as I said before. So to ensure that the research knowledge on the one uh, end of the bridge could be translated into bio-based product, uh, uh, products uh, at the other end of the bridge. And I'm showing you with some picture how those seven past years uh, went by. So first of all, BBIGU was heavily involved in transforming a sector which was very fragmented. Uh, we helped to de-risk investment and reinforce innovation and uh, uh, actually extend infrastructure across uh, the economy as the picture, picture shows different sectors, very diverse materials, fuel, chemicals, uh, uh, farmers. Uh, so uh, we helped in this regard. Second step was to really mobilize and interconnect those actors and try to bring and reach the critical mass that the sector uh, needed. And third, uh, build new value chains across the sectors and realize this uh, uh, bio-based economy, this connected bio-based economy from the field to the uh, end consumers. Um, in numbers, this these were the pictures, and in numbers, seven years on, this translated in uh, 
822 million of BBIJU funds, which covered 142 projects, um, reaching out to more than 1,000 beneficiaries and spreading across 39 countries. Uh, uh, in the middle, you can see um, how the funding was distributed. Most of it went to private companies uh, with a small chunk uh, to uh, going to small and medium sized enterprises, which was a big uh, uh, win uh, and victory for uh, BBIJU. And also with a good 30% going to university and research center. The type of actions BBIJU has been funding, and this will be the same for CBJU, are research and innovation actions, uh, which have a TRL, a technology readiness level, rather low from three to five, and then innovation actions covering both demonstration and flagship, and which uh, you can see from the bottom of the slides absorb the majority of the uh, pot of the funding. And then we have a fourth type of action, which is not linked to a TRL, which is called coordination and support, uh, supporting action, and which uh, is more cross-cutting, so it covers more cross-cutting uh, topics. This shows a little bit how the uh, flagship by refineries in green and the demonstration plants in orange are spread across Europe. Um, and uh, in particular here, uh, focusing on the flagship projects, uh, um, you can see that most of them are located in Western Europe, but still we have three in the, uh, Estonia, Latvia and Romania in the east and one up north in uh, uh, Norway. 14 uh, flagships in total. Um, also, uh, the mobilization of the sector is increasing. In fact, we started from 39 proposals back in 2014 and reached 229 in 2020. And from the red dots on the map, you can see that the spread across the continent is quite uh, uh, even. This also uh, holds true for the diversification of the sectors. We, we've been seeing a growing diversification of the sector, which was already diverse uh, in the first place, but uh, this uh, uh, continued over uh, the years with packaging, food and chemical industry um, being on the front line, but we cover many sectors, including chemicals, bioplastic, textile, pharmaceuticals, uh, biofuels, electronics, and we expect uh, uh, more to come in the future uh, as well. Um, I would also like to say a few words on how we uh, contributed concretely to some of the EU Green Deal uh, priorities. Um, for instance, when it comes to the commitment to replace 25% of oil-based chemicals by, 20, by 2030, sorry, so moving from uh, EU uh, fossil-based to a bio-based uh, economy, uh, by our project, already by the end of 2020, there were 22 new uh, bio-based building blocks and 24 new bio-based materials. When I say bio-based materials, I uh, talk about fibers, uh, organic fertilizer, resins, just to name a few. And those numbers are expected to grow drastically in the next couple of years, uh, reaching 128 for the building blocks and 232 for the uh, materials. Um, second uh, commitment, reducing uh, uh, the EU dependency on the import of uh, uh, strategic raw materials such as protein. I will not say anything about this. We have a living example uh, today. So we'll hear that uh, uh, after my presentation by the Plenitude uh, Partners. Uh, also, promoting a green recovery, so boosting green jobs by uh, 2030. Uh, more than half of our projects are creating jobs in rural areas. In particular, our 11 flagships uh, are, uh, have pledged to create uh, more than 3,000 direct jobs, mostly in rural areas, up to 10,000 indirect uh, uh, jobs. And fourth and lastly, uh, reducing the greenhouse gas emissions by 50%. 50% uh, um, of our ongoing project will reduce energy consumptions, while 58% uh, will deliver bio-based alternative to fossil-based products, uh, so lowering the greenhouse gas uh, emissions. And also interesting to know, the 14 flagship uh, by refineries funded by BBIJU has pledged to save up to 720 kilotons of CO2. So as you can see, we 
hold the good cards, but we're not there yet. Uh, so we're talking about initiatives which are still, which are highly technological and which still uh, are, are risky in terms of investment and issues remain to access the private capital. The structuring of the sector that I mentioned before is still ongoing uh, and will continue uh, to go on and is not completed. Of course, some areas are not covered enough. We talked about the geographical coverage, but also in terms of stakeholders. So more involvement of certain participants, including farmers and integrating them in the value chains. Um, also, uh, whilst we've been um, really popping up in the last decade, a lot of, uh, e of national bioeconomy strategies, national action plans, we still need to uh, make the uh, regulatory and policy framework more robust and more uh, uh, coherent. And finally, continuing consumer awareness uh, uh, to be sure that the bio-based products will be taken up, that uh, there is a market for those products. And so this will also depend on how we tell the story of the bioeconomy and of the uh, bio-based uh, products. Finally, as I said at the beginning, um, whilst BBIJU uh, ended its program in, uh, uh, had its last call uh, in 2021, um, CBJU has just been established, so we're still putting in place a number of milestones which are needed before launching the first programming and the first calls, but I can already anticipate that the first calls will be published and launched in quarter two, between quarter two and quarter three of 2022. So stay tuned and we'll uh, uh, share more information with you soon. And uh, uh, that's it. I hope I stayed in the uh, time allocated. Happy to see the questions in the chat and answer later. And uh, thank you again. Have a fantastic uh, rest of the morning or maybe a dinner wherever you are and hope to see you soon again. And thank you once again.